What's going on everybody? It's Big T with GreenWallStreet.com back with another trading video and today I got something pretty exciting. We're going to be talking about how to begin day trading in 2020 as a complete beginner. The market in 2020 has fooled a lot of people and it has changed significantly from last year and with that a lot of people including myself have had to adapt the way that they trade each day in order to remain nimble and remain profitable. So because of that in the month of July Green Wall Street is going to be launching a brand new day trading course and content filled with tons of chapters and videos explaining these things and you lucky dogs are gonna get to see the first episode for free right here. One of the highest voted comments in my last video was to explain a little bit how Green Wall Street works and what people can expect to see. And you know, this is a small piece of it. We have, you know, tons of different traders, whether it be options, swing trading, day trading, live chats, watch lists, we do, you know, weekly webinars and Q and A's and uh, lots of different things in order to help people with their trading. But again, this is the first episode of the day trading course that we'll be launching later this month. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And once you're ready, come take advantage of this crazy ass market that we're in because um, it's insane and it doesn't seem to be changing or slowing down anytime soon. Um, and it's been a lot of fun. So we've got a great group of people in, uh, in the chat and we'd love to have you. So enjoy the video. I will catch you guys right back here in the next one. Peace out everybody. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to what's really part one of the day trading course here. Thank you guys for checking it out. Um, this is arguably the most important part of not just day trading, but trading in general, and it's understanding edge and how to identify your edge intraday and how to use that strategy to build a profitable day trading system that works for you. And what I mean by edge is what is your advantage in trading the way that you're trading? Do you have a leg up on the competition? Do you have something that is repeatable that you can come in and do every single day and express that edge over time because anybody can come in on any given day and make money, but it's the people who can consistently do that um, and manage their risk well and be in control of their emotions that are going to be able to actually build a career as a stock trader or at least do this, you know, more than a month or two months, three months, however long um, most traders last. So if you don't have edge, then you should not be trading. There's no reason why you should put real money at risk if you don't have a clearly defined edge. So in this uh, lesson, I want to talk about sort of my approach day trading, um, where my edge lies and how I'm able to express that um, each and every day in the market. So uh, here we go. Let's just hop right, uh, right into it. And I wish my thing worked. Okay, there we go. So why short selling gives me the biggest edge in the small cap market. Is that supposed to? Yeah, that's on there. Um, other traders, first of all, profit taking is very normal and healthy. So in the small cap market, you have a lot of stocks that will go parabolic, right? They go straight up and, you know, they'll go up with no no sort of pullback. They'll go up two, three, four, ten days in a row um, with no sort of pullback. But it's very normal for stocks to want to pull back. It's not normal for stocks to go straight up, regardless of the you know fundamental news behind it. Um, you know, stocks that go straight up, they tend to want to come back down, um, and it's really a matter of timing that that. Um, you know, is is the biggest hurdle as a short seller. But it's important to understand that betting that a stock is going to go down, it doesn't mean you're a terrible person, right? Doesn't mean that you're uh, betting against the good of the company. It's very normal for people to want to take profits and sell stocks that have been going straight up. So um, that's the first thing. Second is, you know, look at these charts. This is something like um, INO, which is um, a recent runner. I mean, it's it's ran over the years a few times. You can see how the stock has gone pretty much straight up with no sort of pullback. Stock started its run at about $4 a share, trades all the way up into the high teens, right? And essentially, whenever you get to a certain point, Again, very normal for traders to want to take profits in that because the stock has just gone straight up and everybody's sitting at a profit. So the first time that they have you know, a reason to sell, they're going to do it and they're going to take profit and that leads to some downside in the stock. Uh, also, the majority of small cap runners 
typically fall back to where they started. So again, I'm thinking of these small cap companies that are, you know, releasing a lot of PRs and they're jumping on whatever trend is popular in the world and in the market, whether it be, you know, Ebola or COVID-19 here in 2020, or it might be electric vehicles, or it might be weed, it might be Bitcoin. There's always some sort of small cap theme. And the majority of these stocks, and by majority, I mean, typically all of them um, come back right to where they started. So a lot of them will run, you know, 200, 500, a thousand percent, but over time they come back down um, and sometimes even lower to where they, uh, they started their runs. So this is just a few different um, photos that you can tell the charts look very similar, but it's three different charts and you can see um, it's very predictable and it's very common. You know, it, there's two sides of these trades. There's the front side and then there's the back side. Um, but you can see they end up coming all the way back to, um, to where they started their runs. Um, so how do you know which stocks are going to go parabolic, right? So how can I find that stock that is going to go from one to 10 and how can I hold it you know, confidently during that time and not sell when it goes from, you know, one to two and then take your profits, right? That's what the majority of traders, especially in the small cap market, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to find the next, you know, here in 2020, they're trying to find the next GNUS. They're trying to find the next UONE or JFIN. Um, but honestly, uh, that's the same thing that I tried to do when I first started trading six or seven years ago. And the answer is you don't. It's so hard to predict which of these stocks are going to go because half of them are being promoted by stock promoters. So you can like you can follow, you know, penny stock alerts and, and newsletters and different chat rooms that are pumping these stocks up artificially. But at the end of the day, I still have not met a single person who is able to um, accurately predict which of these stocks are going to go parabolic. Right. And, and, you know, how do you choose the difference between the one that's going to go from one to 10 and the one that's going to go from one to a dollar 50 and then crash back. You know, there are certainly traders that can use the momentum on the front side of the move to, um, to make a profit to the long side. But at the end of the day, you just don't know which stocks are going to go parabolic and trying to guess that is just that. In my opinion, it's a guessing game. It's much easier, in my opinion, to trade the backside of the stock because after something goes parabolic, right, and you see the stock that goes from one to 10 or two to 20 or whatever the case may be, as long as you can identify that that company, you know, should not be trading where it is. And you can do that through due diligence of the stock and looking at the PRs. A lot of these companies, it's not the first time that they've ran. So a lot of them are notorious for shifting their business models around again to whatever's hot. So it's very easy to go back and look at the history of a stock and see, oh, okay, the last time it traded up 500%, it crashed right back down. So looking at this from a short selling perspective, it's much easier to just wait for the stock to go parabolic first and then know that it's going to come back down because at that point, it's just a matter of timing it, right? Which is not to say that it's, it's easy, but it is much more simple and it's much more predictable um, to trade the backside of the stock. Um, so also, Midday offerings. This is something that you see a lot in the small cap market. Essentially, what will happen is these companies, you know, will a lot of times pay promoters to promote their stock. They'll send out newsletters, you know, momentum traders will catch on and they will use these sharp increases in price of their shares to offer more shares for sale in the market at a lower price. And what this looks like intraday is the stock will many times just crash in a matter of minutes. Not only that, but it's really difficult to get out of those trades whenever you're long, because anytime a stock, uh, you know, falls a certain percentage in a given amount of time, it will actually pause and it will halt and you're stuck in it and you're not able to trade it during that halt. So this is something that also plays to your advantage as a short seller and it's something in the small cap market if you're trading these to the long side, which is a big risk because you never know when it's going to happen. And when it happens, it happens very, very fast. And it can be very, um, you, it's too fast for most people to react to and get out. 
Um, but again, if you imagine yourself on the other side of that trade and you're short one of these stocks and an offering comes out, you know, that stock crashing is in turn your profit. So again, history is on your side. This is, you know, a chart of OBLN, which, you know, I had an offering that dropped, dropped the stock like 65% in a couple of days. I could show you a hundred of these. Um, and even, you know, it's June, 2020 at the time of this recording over the past few weeks, there's been at least five to 10 of these um, that drop an offering midday and the stock will crash 30, 40, 50% in just a couple of minutes. So that's just another, you know, uh, another thing that adds to your edge as a short seller um, in this sort of market and in this niche. And lastly, you have to know who you're trading against. This is very, very important. So in different areas of the market, you have different types of traders and specifically in the small cap market and a lot of these, you know, scammier, sketchier small cap companies, the people who are on the other side of your trade and the people who are buying and holding these stocks are not always the most sophisticated investor. So you can see, like I pulled up some tweets here of some of these popular uh, small cap runners over the last uh, couple of weeks here in June. And you can see, you know, like you're gonna see the wildest reversal in IDEX or I'll post nudes. Or you have people who will sit there, even though they're in a dying stock, they will hold it because they are believers in the company. Now there will also be momentum traders and people who are smart, long traders that can profit from these, but those are not the people that I'm, I'm talking about. Um, you know, we, in the small cap market, it's just, uh, it attracts a lot of the newer traders, um, a lot of people who are going for home runs, who are really looking for a lottery ticket, as opposed to trying to build a profitable day trading system or just a trading system in general. Um, and that's good, though it's easy to take those people's money. It's much easier to take their money than it is to take the money of someone like this. So whenever you get into the larger cap stocks and you start trading, you know, maybe you're trading the index, the NASDAQ, NASDAQ, you know, the S&Ps, or you're trading Apple, Amazon, Google, all these larger cap stocks, your opponents change. Right now you're trading, you know, in securities and offerings that are trading billions of dollars each day. And the person on the other side of the screen and the other side of the trade might be Goldman Sachs, right? It might be some hedge fund. It might be a high frequency trading algorithm that you're trading against. And it just makes the game much more difficult for you, which is not to say it can't be done. You can still trade well, but you know, as a trader, I want to come into the market each day and I want to play against the worst opponent, right? I want to play against people with helicopter hats on and I want the money that I make to be as easy as possible. You know, you can make trading very, very difficult if you want it to be, or you can keep it simple. Um, and I think being a short seller in this market and understanding how this niche and how this game is played um, and how it tends to play out over time, all of those things play to your advantage and give you edge in the small cap market as a short seller. So just to wrap it up, got some, uh, some questions here for you guys to chew on and think about why is it easier to trade on the backside of these moves so all these small cap runners we know from looking at history they run up a lot they might go 200 percent they might go 500 percent they might go a thousand percent none of that in my opinion is really predictable and i think that shows because you really don't hear a lot about people that uh, you know are able to hold those stocks for that long maybe they buy in at an early price but they get out way too early uh, because they just they don't know where it's going but once it's gone and the stock has you know ran parabolic and you know that it's way too high at that point it's just a matter of timing and the backside is very predictable uh, so that's why I think it's it's easier to trade the backside of these moves and why do these stocks crash in such a predictable way again it's because profit taking on these is very normal and healthy like stocks should pull back stocks don't just go up 
forever. They can go up longer than you think they can go up. Um, but especially in the small cap market, again, if you're able to do your due diligence and understand, you know, which of these stocks are actually going to change the world, which is, you know, uh, normally none of them, um, and which ones are just using the hype to, you know, spike up their their stock prices. Um, you know, it just it makes these patterns so predictable, and that's why you can look at thousands of these charts, literally thousands, and they all look the exact same. They go straight up, and then they come straight back down. Um, and lastly, what is your edge? After watching this video, like, can you clearly explain where your advantages lie? in shorting stocks in the small cap market. Next video, you know, we're going to talk about risks, but you need to be able to explain your edge. And I think all of those things combined is your edge. It's a combination of knowing that the backside is coming, right? So it's not very predictable to know how high they're going to go or should I buy this stock here? Should I sell it here? Like, I don't really, I have no idea. But once it's gone, it's very predictable to know it's on the backside. So it's, it gives you a small edge as a short seller. Also, you know, knowing your opponent is not always the most sophisticated trader um, is uh, you know, another small piece of your edge. These midday offerings and the fact that these companies use these quick you know, increases in price to sell shares at the market at a lower price, causing their stocks to crash, also adds to your edge a little bit more. And also, it's just there's so much dump risk in going long these names like you just stocks tend to take the stairs up and the elevator down and that's true in the overall stock market that's true whether we're talking about i mean this year in 2020 the s p crashed you know 30 some odd percent and that happened in a matter of weeks and we wiped out years worth of rallies um and that's even more evident in the small cap market something may run up and um you know it may take three four days for it to really go parabolic and in one day or even 30 minutes, that, st that entire move can be reversed via some sort of offering or just people selling the stock and, and panicking again because they're not the, the most sophisticated investor. So hopefully that, uh, that makes sense and that sort of explains the edge and, and why I am primarily short biased in the small cap market and betting that these stocks will go down. It's simply because I've seen thousands of them play out and you know once you've seen the movie you kind of know what to expect and how to um, trade them effectively so next episode we're going to talk about the risks of short selling so it's easy to talk about the edge and why you know you have small advantages as a short seller but it's also important to recognize risk and that's what we're going to talk about next so thank you for tuning in i will see you in the next chapter